What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Apple Guy. Today we are going to be taking a look at the iPhone 4. Ten years after the year 2000, the iPhone is now the most popular smartphone in the world. 2010, the iPhone 4 would add even more reason for upgrades and new users. The first glass and stainless steel design that is beautiful. After a leak by Gizmodo via an Apple employee that lost a prototype in a bar, which they paid $5,000 to buy. The iPhone 4 was announced on June 7, 2010 and went on sale on June 24, 2010 in the black color only. The iPhone 4 was the first to have Apple's custom A-series CPU as well as much more. The iPhone 4 featured its first Three access gyro where you can pick up the phone, you can move it within an app to have a parallax effect or moving around in spatial effect with the three axis gyro. It was the first iPhone to include a built in flash on the back, which can be used as a flashlight. The first iPhone to include a front facing camera. There we go, front-facing camera, first iPhone. For FaceTime, the first IPS Retina display with 326 pixels per inch over the previous non-Retina display iPhone 3GS. This was the first iPhone to launch with iOS 4, which had a lot of new features with multitasking, and much, much more, and it was the first version of iOS to be called iOS instead of iPhone OS. This was also the first iPhone with a stainless steel frame that is used for wireless transmissions, which means the stainless steel frame with these brakes, the antenna, the antenna brakes within the stainless steel was used for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cellular reception. And this was also the first phone to have that famous antenna gate where you gripped the iPhone in your left hand and the signal reception would drop. So, let's take a look at the specifications of this phone. This phone featured the A4 CPU at 45 nanometers at 1 gigahertz, but it was underclocked to 800 megahertz and it was a 32 bit processor. It had 512 megabytes of DRAM. Storage came in 8, 16, and 32 gigabytes. Battery was 1,420 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts, 5.3 watt hour lithium ion battery. You had your famous 30 pin connector, which was still available at this point. As far as battery talk time, you can get up to seven hours on 3G. This did not have 4G, even though it was called the iPhone 4, and a lot of people confused the iPhone 4 name with it having 4G because 4G was launched in 2010, but this phone did not have 4G whatsoever. It had 3G and 3.5G, or HSPDA+. And as far as battery usage on 2G on the GSM model only was up to 14 hours and standby time was up to 300 hours. As far as going online and surfing the web, you had up to six hours on Wi-Fi and up to 10 hours on Wi-Fi and six hours, I mean, on 3G. Video playback was up to 10 hours and audio consumption was up to 40. This iPhone was also one of the first ones to have two different models, a AT&T model and a Verizon model with the eSIM. So you can see here we have the white iPhone on the left, which was a Verizon model, and the one on the left here, the one on the right, which is the black one, was the AT&T version, which had a mini SIM right here. So you can see the iPhone 4 was also the first iPhone and first phone to pioneer the eSIM on the Verizon and Sprint models for CDMA because it was the first time Apple has ever partnered with Verizon and Sprint 
to launch an iPhone on that service. So it was very popular that you can now get an iPhone without using AT&T and going to Verizon or unlocking the phone to work with Sprint. And the display was your famous three and a half inches. Of course, LED technology, backlit ISP, IPS display, TFT, LCD. The resolution was 960 by 640 at 320 pixels per inch. Coated with a fingerprint resistant OB, OB coating on the front and back glass. The camera was five megapixels on the back. And it had a backside illuminated sensor on the camera processing unit or the IP ISP. It can shoot HD video, which was the first for an iPhone in 2010 to shoot HD video at 720, 720p at 30 frames a second. Five times digital zoom, four element lens, LED flash of course, and can be used as a flashlight, which is awesome. Which on the iPhone 4, it's stuck on, so you can see that it's illuminated. You also had photo and video geotagging for the first time. Really mainstream because of iOS 4 to be able to go into photos and track where Certain photos were taken and whatnot, which was pretty darn awesome at the time. And plus, on a beautiful phone like this, that's amazing. And the front facing camera was only 0.3 megapixels, VGA quality at 480p, 30 frames per second. And the fun fact about FaceTime, it only worked on Wi-Fi when the iPhone 4 came out. So you had to be connected to Wi-Fi. It wouldn't even work over your cellular service. That's because at the time, AT&T, Verizon, and Sprint uh, were having trouble building out their 3G networks and really expanding the capability of 3G to handle video conferencing over the cellular network. So that's why Apple just decided to go with Wi-Fi instead because... Wi-Fi at the time and even today still offers higher bandwidth than the current 3G, 4G, and LTE, so it's better to connect to Wi-Fi for things like that. But of course, as you know, as time went on, later iPhones would get rid of the Wi-Fi only FaceTime and move on to cellular. And it did have Wi-Fi built in, of course, 802.11a, b, g, and n. Only thing was the 802.11n technology only worked in 2.4 gigahertz mode only. You still had Bluetooth 2.1 plus extended data range wireless technology. So it wasn't Bluetooth 3.0 or anything like that, even though it probably was out by the time the iPhone 4 was being produced and prototyped and things like that. But of course, that never made it. And it had the use of location through the GPS, the digital compass that I had built in, of course, when the iPhone 3GS carried over, and it used the Wi-Fi and, and cellular, of course, for other GPS assistance. As far as the antenna gate feature goes, that's where we have things like these bumper cases that you could have bought from Apple. And in fact, Steve Jobs and company actually had to come out and apologize for this issue because it was an algorithm issue as well as the antenna design was not really that tested was tested really well but in terms of like on the left side of course you see how there's only one antenna break on this version and on the cdma model you had two breaks this mostly was an issue for the at&t models because as you can see at&t only had one break at the bottom and not at the top above the mute switch only at the top here so there was structural differences in the antenna placements in both cellular uh, CDMA and GSM iPhones and it was mostly AT&T's iPhones that were getting that issue so what Steve Jobs did he came out and he told a press conference about the issue apologizing for it and then also explained that a lot of the returns for the iPhone 4 was not as high as other models and demonstrated with other phones that if you hold them in a certain place, your left hand grip or even in your right hand on certain phones, the cellular reception would drop. But Apple did release a iOS 4 update 
that did fix the algorithm for the antenna bar strength, as well as the proximity sensor from answering phone calls would, if you had it up to your face, it would hit the end button just by it resting against your cheek and would just end the call. So they had to fix that in the iOS update. And besides those little issues, users did get a free bumper case. Like if you bought this bumper case for $29, you would have got a refund from Apple at the time of the press conference up till a certain date. I think it's like December of 2010 or early 2011 within that time frame. And you would have gotten your $29 back in a Apple Store gift card, which you could have used, of course, to shop in the Apple Store or whatnot. And if you bought an iPhone 4 during that time, like just brand new, you would have got a bumper free. And the bumper had built-in metal frames in, underneath the plastic that would literally help the signal strength be more stronger and as well as providing a coarse protective layer between your hand and the antenna band so it didn't cause any interference, which a lot of people like the idea of, well, getting a bumper case and whatnot, but people did like that Apple gave refunds for it and gave um, a, uh, a rebate. I should say, of course, for the $29 that people bought before the issue and reported the issue and whatnot. But as far as that, the iPhone 4 really featured a beautiful design. As far as this white version of the iPhone 4, it did come out later. It didn't come out on time, which was a very bad um, thing on Apple's part because people really want the iPhone 4. It came out 365 days later when it was released. So the iPhone 4 had issues because the white coating underneath the glass would turn yellow after a few uses because the um, glue that they used to bond the white um, paint to the glass would not dry fast enough when they were shipping out the iPhone. So it would arrive and people would notice yellow discoloration and they obviously had to get replaced, you know, Apple would replace it and whatnot. But of course, this iPhone 4 went through some damage, but it's not even, the front of it's not even yellowed or anything like that. And the iPhone 4 did feature a beautiful design. This design was one that people saw from that Gizmodo leak when they bought it from someone that found it from the person that lost it in the Apple, from in the bar in Apple prototype and took it apart and took a look at the A4 chip and took a look of how it works and things like that and of course Steve Jobs didn't like that they had to send the computer task force over to collect information on it and to obviously get it back and to retrieve that prototype and this phone it really has a beautiful design it did carry over to the iPhone 5 5s and even the iPhone SE, the 2016 model. And as far as iPhones returning to this beautiful glass and back des uh, design, it's really a lovely design that they kept to this day. And it really shows you that this design, it's just beautiful, beautiful to hold, beautiful to look at. And it's just outright a gorgeous phone. And people would still use this if it supported 4G or whatnot. So very excited that Apple brought it back for the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and iPhone 10, of course, and continued that trend with the stainless steel and front and glass back for the newer models. And as far as software goes for the iPhone 4, it was better on iOS 4, of course, when it originally launched with this product. It did end up on iOS 7, which, in all fairness, it should have at least gotten Maybe iOS 8 if Apple would have tweaked the OS to work on the A4 chip. You know, give this phone at least something more better to end its life on instead of iOS 7. But it really shows you how far the 3.5 inch display went. And this particular iPhone went on sale in third world countries all the way up till 2015, making it the longest iPhone in history to continue to be produced by Apple 
of being sold overseas all the way up till 2015, which is very awesome, five years after this phone was announced by the legendary Steve Jobs. And it did not have Siri or anything like that. Of course, the iPhone 4S would feature that and would bring in a new era of virtual assistants. But this iPhone at the time brought in standards of FaceTime, standards of selfies, standards of using your phone as a flashlight with the LED in the back, illuminated camera sensors, a olecobic um, coating for fingerprints for the front and back glass. That was standard on other phones later on. It also brought a standard of of the ISP IPS display, retina display. No longer a non-IPS display or anything like that. So you had beautiful color accuracy even off edges here. You can see that it's beautiful even when I turn it almost all the way. You can even still see it starts to wash out here on camera, but it's still good looking. So it has beautiful colors. And that was one of the main selling points of this iPhone 4. As far as processing power goes, it flow it, it really drives through iOS 7 beautifully, even though they could have obviously pushed out iOS 8 for it, because I feel it still had more processing power for it. And this also marked the first time Apple has really locked in hardware and software on their mobile devices. And other companies like Samsung would do the same thing with their S. Exynos um, chips, Exynos chips, and maybe other companies in the future would do that, like Google would make its own chip for the Pixels or whatnot, but it ushered in that era with the iPhone 4, and this was the thinnest iPhone at the time, and the thinnest iPhone of 2010. Of course, by today's standards, it's chunky, but it's beautifully able to be held in one hand, very nice feature that Apple kept the headphone jack at the top at the time, which was still beautiful. And it was also the first iPhone to feature at the top here a noise cancellation mic. So that was a first on a iPhone. Other smartphones had it, but the iPhone really refined it and pioneered it even better. So that was the first for the iPhone 4, which obviously carried over till today and reoriented itself in other, other areas. Same one speaker at the bottom in your microphone. Same 30 pin your classic, same home button. It's just a really nice phone to look at 10 years later, especially the white iPhone 4. And these phones are still beautiful. If you still have one of these, you can leave a comment down below on what was your experience waiting in line for one of these things or pre-ordering it and being one of the 600,000 people within 24 hours that pre-ordered one of these devices. What was your experience of opening it up? What did you like about it? What did you hate about it? And do you think Apple's newest iPhones that mimic the iPhone 4 with the stainless steel band and the glass is like the iPhone 4 or is it different? So you can leave all those things down below. Like the video if you liked it. If you didn't, you can hit that other button. That's fine with me. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.